Welcome to the Market Edge Tech Talk with Will Pauley and special guest David Blake. We're going to review the market conditions of the past week, as well as longer term trends from a technical perspective. Take a closer look at the major indices, and to wrap it up, dig into a handful of individual stocks and ETFs requested by subscribers. If you have questions or want to submit a stock for next week's webinar, email us at support at marketedge.com. Hello and welcome to the Tech Talk, for Tuesday, January 24th, 2022. I'm your host, Will Polly, and I'm here with my co-host, David Blake. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing good, Will. Thanks. All right. Let's start off with a look what the market's been doing this past week. Let's look at the market letter. Okay. Well, we had a, uh, uh, a mixed, mixed market last week. We had, uh, you know, we, we, the previous couple of weeks, we've been focusing on uh, whether the Fed was going to continue to keep raising rates at a fast pace or what they were going to do. And we ended up starting to focus on uh, on earnings. It's, um, uh, I guess I guess the word would be mediocre at best. Um, and we opened the week last week. Uh, the Nasdaq was on a seven seven day win streak uh, on mo- on Tuesday. Or we we're we we're closed on Monday. Tesla was the big leader. It jumped uh, about seven and a half percent, and that was uh, kind of offset some of the, the problems with the, the Dow faced, where they had Goldman Sachs and and Travelers came out with uh, some disappointing. Earnings estimates. In fact, Goldman Sachs uh, they're trying to uh, put in this retail uh, function into their into the into the firm, which is going a little bit. Uh, they're having some uh, some problems with that. But then we ended up with some uh, weak December retail sales and industrial production sa- uh, numbers on on Wednesday, and that um, saw the market open up uh, uh, a lot lower. Uh, you know, in the past we've talked quite a bit about. Um, you know, or, or bad news is good news because bad news means that the uh, uh, the Federal Reserve would most likely would, would slow down the rate hikes. Uh, we've kind of got that built in now, but now when you get bad news, the problem is uh, that uh, it kind of is starting to you know, shake the, the the floor of whether or not we can navigate a soft landing into the into the economy. So, so as we go forward here, when you see uh, numbers start to uh, you know weaker than what we're looking for, you may see the market sell off where even if rates come down a little bit, because uh, investors will be thinking, okay, well, this, this is not good now. Uh, in fact, today we, we saw a contraction in the uh, uh, S&P Global uh, PMI com- composite and the market, the Dow is actually down about 300 points early. And again, that was because it's uh, that, that's, uh, the contracting economy is not something that we're looking for for a uh, a soft landing. So when you now when you get the bad news, you've got to take it um, as bad news and not um, the point where oh great this was bad we're going to start you know we're going to see rates come down that's going to be 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 what you know what the market needs you know it's going to take a while for these these rate hikes to to kick in it's not something that um, you know we've been doing it now for what six months or so but we're just, it takes about six or seven months for these rate hikes to really kick in we've raised them fast so it's going to happen faster than normal, but um, historically, and I've been in the market for 35 years, um, you usually you usually don't see them navigate something, uh, you know, uh, like a soft land or something. Normally, they always seem to go too far on the upside, as they always seem to go too far to the downside, just as the market does. You know, when it overreacts to the upside, it always overreacts to the downside. So, I'm not on the soft landing camp yet. I think we'll we'll be in a recession if we're not already in one, and uh, you know we'll see the market struggle for a little bit in here. But anyway, on that uh, on that uh, December retail sales number, we saw the Dow drop about 613 points. I think the day before that it had been down about 250. That was almost two percent. It was the biggest uh, one day loss in a month. We saw a lot of the rate sensitive sectors. Uh, really underperformed that day. And then we came in with a strong jobs report on Thursday, which also bogged down equities. Again, the the, the, the jobs reports are a little bit mixed, you know, because the Federal Reserve wants to see the job market soften, and that, that will show to them that, uh, you know, we're getting a, a slower economy. But as long as they – there's kind of like – there's going to be a Goldilocks number in there that they're looking for, and we're not hitting it. I think jobs were down about – down under 15,000. In fact, it was the, the, the least amount of jobs, uh, initial jobless claims we had since last June. So that wasn't good because the, uh, the jobs reports, uh, one of the 
things that the Fed is is really concentrating on because they want to get that down to probably around you know two two seventy five two hundred eighty thousand or so is what what I hear they're looking for where they'll they'll be a little bit more satisfied that uh, the job market is softening. And of course, you read daily about Alphabet and Meta and uh, Microsoft and all these firms uh, getting ready to lay off people. So I think we're going to get there sooner than than later. And, that should uh, start to see things, things shake up a little bit here. Okay, we did see uh, on Friday we got a, a, a real nice push in the market. We had uh, Netflix came out with uh, better than expected earnings. Um, that really uh, triggered a nice sharp rally. Um, investors are coming in here now because that's one of the FANG stocks, and they really jumped into uh, uh, the growth sectors. The communication services, technology, and energy were uh, all positive last week. They, they led the market. Um, into a mixed finish. And remember, we were down uh, about 2.5% or so you know, going into uh, Thursday. So um, anyway, it, was a, it was a nice rebound. We did get some uh, follow-through on, on Tuesday, which, which was nice. Yesterday, the market was uh, – I think the Dow at one point – the NASDAQ at one point was up almost uh, about 2.5%. Uh, the Dow ended up yesterday up about 254 points. Uh, the NASDAQ – uh, jumped 220 points. It was up over 2%, so that was good. And we also had uh, some good uh, 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 internal breath, which uh, you know, supported the higher prices, too. <laughs> as far as the technical condition of the market goes, we're, it was, it was, we had a lot of deterioration going into Friday, but that big spike um, kind of brought the technical condition back to mixed. A lot of the different uh, technical indicators are in neutral territory. Um, one of the things uh, that you, you may have looked at, that, that was that the, although the CTI is negative, uh, we're still a neutral on the market. Part of that is the reason um, when you see the Dow Jones uh, outperform the other, other uh, indexes, um, that, that brings the momentum index down. Uh, when the other indexes are outperforming the Dow, it takes the, the momentum index is stronger. Now, you've had the Dow lead this market off of the, the October lows so far. Then last week, uh, all, almost all the other indexes outperformed the Dow. So that's why you saw the jump up in the momentum index, which kept our uh, market posture uh, at uh, at neutral. Okay, so anyway, so we're, we saw that. We saw the um, uh, the Dow Jones. It kind of ran out of steam. It slipped back below its 50-day moving average. Uh, it, it, it was below the August and December highs on Friday. I believe it. I got a couple of charts right. I think we may have moved up above that. Um, finally, now the S&P 500 is still trading below the August and, and December highs, as are are most of the other indexes. So that's something we, you know, it means that they're they're still in a downtrend that we need to watch. We need to get uh, some of these other indexes above those um, lines. Now the uh, Dow Jones is actually trading above its. Uh, downward uh, descending trend line off the January December highs uh, we're still above that has actually come down and kind of clicked around that that line and, and moved higher again so um, that's that's a positive the s p 500 however um, keeps bumping up against that uh, descending trend line it comes in right around four thousand four thousand ten and we keep getting up there yesterday we crossed above it briefly uh, today we opened a little bit lower and we're and we're Back up there, bumping heads against that. That's something to watch. We, we we need a good close above, about I'd say about above 40, 35, 40, 50, something like that, uh, for the S&P 500 to maybe signal a little bit of a t trend change. And that, but then we're going to run into uh, uh, resistance again around 4100. We we bumped off of that twice. Uh, that was the November high. It was also the December high. So. Um, that would be the next point you want to watch if we if we can close above 4050. That 4100 is going to be a, a tough nut to, to cross into that again. But uh, uh, if it does, then we can we can possibly run back up to the August highs. We'll have to wait on that. Now another positive we we saw was the uh, uh, outperformance of the secondary indexes. Um, market technicians like to see that, and that, by that I mean the uh, the transports, the small cap Russell 2000, and even the uh, Philadelphia uh, Semiconductor Index. We want to see those uh, secondary indexes outperform and lead the market higher and lower. Yesterday, uh, you know, we had that big spike up in semiconductors. If you read the Daily News uh, Daily Report, was the uh, uh, the leader there. 
uh, semiconductors, the, the, the SOX index was actually up about 5% itself, which is that, that's a huge move uh, uh, for an index, especially. You had a, uh, an upgrade uh, from Barclays on the semiconductors. Um, you also had some, uh, you know, some upgrades uh, on uh, Dow Component Salesforce, which got a boost from a report that Elliott Management had taken a billion-dollar stake in the company. And also you had a big jump uh, by Wayfair. It spiked uh, 26% yesterday uh, on a double upgrade from J.P. Morgan Chase. It had gone from a I uh, think underperform to a uh, outperform or a buy on that. So um, you're getting some uh, firms starting to come in here, looking a little bit more at growth. Yesterday we had technology and communication services, consumer discretionary again, financials and industrials all outperformed. Um, those are the uh, sectors that you want to see lead this market. So that's all good. Um, one last thing I want to check on here. One thing I didn't like last week, and part of that was just because you had the big, the big one-day spike in the uh, in the markets. But uh, underlying breadth wasn't as strong as what you'd like to see. You know, when uh, we actually had uh, the NYSC um, AD line was actually down last week, as was the index. But the Nasdaq AD line was up, but it was only up about 400 units. So nothing uh, to write home about there. Yeah, we also look at the investor sentiment uh, to see if we're getting, uh, you know, big gains higher or lower, and uh, you know, more bullishness or more bearishness. And um, we're, we're kind of right in the middle right now. And we're kind of, you know, the sentiment index is at a one. That's pretty neutral. You know, you're not too bullishness. You don't have too much bearishness. And um, you know, we're seeing the uh, uh, institutions start to pick up their exposure to the market. That's good. They jumped last week to about 65% exposure. That's up from uh, just 38% about two weeks ago. And then you also had the retail uh, uh, investors. They're, they're actually getting up to the point where they're almost even with the number of bears. Uh, still below normal, but we are seeing a, uh, you know, uh, more of a neutral position on that. So that's good. Um, as far as what's leading the market here this last couple of days, um, Say we, you know, most of the industry groups are still uh, strong or improving. Uh, out of the 91 that we cover, 58 are uh, strong or improving. Only 33 are uh, weak or deteriorating. But uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, strength right now in, in metals, non-ferrous. Someone did want me to talk about gold today, and unfortunately, we we got tied up in. A, we were going to do that last week, but we got tied up uh, and missed a couple of weeks here with these uh, Mondays being off. Uh, I'll try to talk a little bit about gold. Last week, gold looks strong. It's just, it's up today. Um, uh, if you are listening to this, we're seeing uh, actually the metal, the non-ferrous metals, precious metals, coal, that type of thing, diversified mining. And currently, they're the strongest industry groups uh, in our, in the market edge uh, book. And I think that's something you want to look at. That's a lot of that is coming from uh, uh, anticipation of China's reopening. And you see copper and uh, copper jumping up here. I think it was about up eight or ten percent. Hold on one second here. Okay. You saw copper making a big move here. Freeport McMurray, I think, is coming out tomorrow with earnings. We'll see how that does. Southern Copper, SCCO, is at a nice big run. Uh, but so some of these comp companies like that, you may want to look at some of the gold mining stocks. Uh, ETS look good. Uh, Vail, V-A-L-E, is a, a metals uh, stock that looks good. And uh, even on the ETFs, uh, as far as uh, what was strong over the last week, I, lo I look at those on the, on the weekly market letters, what uh, performs over the one-week period. And again, you had com commodity-based metals, you had commodity precious metals, commodity blends, and commodity energy. Those were the strongest uh, uh, sector ETFs in the whole market. And that just kind of shows you that uh, – you know, they're getting ready for the, 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 if you're going to start expanding and also the economy is going to start getting better as we, as the rates come down and we start to pick up and China's reopening, those are the stocks that are going to uh, start to go. And and then at some point, you're also going to start to see the uh, railroads and, and stuff like that. You start to make the, uh, make the products, you got to move them somehow. So anyway, that's uh, what we're looking at right now. I think the problem I wrote last, last night, um, that uh, you know, we, we start. This is a really busy week with earnings. Um, what what we're going to look at right now is two two different things. 
Um, again, bad news is going to be bad news. So if, uh, if it comes in a lot, if we're looking, say, for a number of, say, 55 or something like that, and, and it comes in at, say, 48, uh, the market's going to have going to sell off. But then, but what we're looking at right here is the big debate with, uh, you know, with, with traders and market technicians right now is whether or not uh, October was the bottom of this bear market. Uh, it seems to be, you know, more and more the more people are starting to think that. Uh, what uh, what what would happen would be while well, earnings would come out here the next couple of weeks if we get a lot lower guidance um, and we start getting uh, you know some more downgrades to some of these stocks then perhaps and, and, and the numbers start coming in more negative than uh, economic numbers more negative than we expect due to uh, the, the the sharp increase in rates then the, it's, it's possible that we could get one more leg down again that would go down and possibly challenge that October low. And that's the big debate right now. We don't know. Uh, it's anybody's guess. Again, those two things. If we if we you know, if we're looking for numbers like 55 on the economic data, and they come in at 51, 52, 53, not too bad. If they start coming in, you know, if we're looking for 55, we get like a number like 48. Uh, that's going to start rattling the people that are expecting a soft landing, and they'll start saying, okay, well, it's going to be a hard landing, and that's what would uh, uh, again cause us to maybe get one more leg down. But at, but at present, the way we're going right now, we're, it's why we're keeping this neutral uh, market posture, because I think I think it's, a uh, to me, it's almost a 50-50 uh, flip of a coin here, whether or not we're going to get that uh, other leg down or whether, you know, we hit the bottom, we struggle through earnings here as we get some downgrades, and then we can actually start to move move up again come the spring. So we'll, we'll find out here uh, certainly over the next, uh, you know, two weeks. We have another FOMC meeting coming out on February 1st when they make an announcement, which will be a quarter point hike. That's, so that's a 98% probability of that right now. And the other thing is that we have, I think, about a, about a almost 40 or 50% probability that, that the Fed pauses in, Mar in March 22nd. And so, you know, it, within the next, you know, two to six weeks, we're going we're gonna to have our answer about whether, you know where uh, whether we're gonna have another leg down or whether it's it, you know we start to buy in here and, and we start to see the economy pull itself out of this slowness and start to pick up. All right, so we actually uh, have some features on on Market Edge. I, I think might be helpful for our, our subscribers here if you would like to go over these uh, stuff on uh, Stockwatch. Uh, <laughs> For those not aware of it, I think it could really help with uh, managing their portfolios. That's, that's a good idea. What? Well, go ahead and click over to the Stockwatch. If, if you're not using Stockwatch, uh, you're, you're missing, I think, probably one of the main main features of, of Market Edge. This thing uh, helps you manage your portfolio the way a professional would would manage his portfolio on a daily basis or weekly basis, wherever you want to check it. However, however uh, active you are. Uh, what we want to do first right now, uh, in your stock watch list, you always want to, uh, you know, just have have the stocks that you currently own, and then you also it'd, it'd be nice to have maybe a list of 20 or 30 stocks that you that you look at. You know, whether you're looking for fast growing stocks, whether you go uh, and get the S and P five star stocks or four star stocks, things like that, or maybe you can if you have access to Merrill Lynch's, uh, you know. Uh, best Buy list, something like that, and you can get these lists. So you, can, you can dig around on the internet, you can find them, and then when you uh, come in here, you can actually make your uh, that, that list as your um, your primary watch list. But first, of all, let's make up let's make up a, a list. Well, why don't you show them how they can um, you know go up man manage their reports and actually make a stock watch list. Uh, and they can do this at home later on. So what would you let's call this? Uh, yeah, call it uh, Tech Talk list. And if you're at home again, you might call this your uh, your your watch list or my 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 watch list or or whatever you want to call it. You can do that. And the first thing you want to do is what is going to be important uh, that you want to put in in this thing. Now I, I can tell you what I put in my my primary list, and that is I tell I want the I want the opinion. Obviously, you know, once I get this list in, in there, you just click on this where it says add columns. You can click to that and it'll uh, put it down the bottom. 
I also want the uh, power rating. Okay, I like the 50-day relative strength. I want it, well, when I buy a stock, I want to buy a stock that's outperforming the uh, S&P 500 over the last month or so. Put that in there. I want to know the close. I want to obviously want to see what the, uh, you know, where this where the stock is, is closed up today. And then I like to put uh, the five-day percent change and the 10-day percent change to see if this thing maybe it's been. Uh, coming off of a bottom, but now it's starting to really pick up. The 50-day relative strength will show some of it, but uh, it you know it, it balances that, smooths it out a little bit more. This will be something if something came out and we got a quick and we're getting a quick jump off there. Then I put the up-down slope to make sure the thing's under accumulation. I want that bullish. I want I want the stock to be under accumulation when I buy it. You know, besides um, outperforming the S&P 500, and then I put the year high and year low just so I can see. You know, I don't, I don't want to. I don't necessarily want to buy. Uh, you know, something that's the, right at the very top. If I'm looking for a long term, but sometimes I do. Or I don't want it. To, you know, breaking down below the year low. So if I put all those things in there, okay. Then you take at the bottom of this thing. You can say create report in the right hand corner. That green button. Okay. Now that comes up here on your stopwatch feature. And as you can see over here, it says, go ahead and click on stock watch. There you go. You know, we get that. And now when you pull up a, a list of stocks, you know, it has these uh, these headings over there. And to me, what I will do is I'll click on 50-day relative strength over there. Click on it twice. Okay. And then that, this, will, this will show me what stocks I have in here. That are outperforming the uh, the uh, uh, the S&P 500. Now down there at Tesla, you can see this underperforming S&P 500. But hey, over the last 10 days, Tesla is up 20 percent and 17 percent over the last 10 days. So even though it's underperforming the the market, if I'm looking to maybe go into Tesla, this but that, that would give me the uh, uh, a reason to keep it up there and look for a buy interest on there. I don't like to buy stocks that are up 20 percent over a 10-day or 20-day period, but I certainly would maybe get a couple more days to see if it holds those gains, and then I can go in there. Now, another thing, like when I have, uh, uh, and, and this a lot, a lot of people probably could have used, when you have a, uh, 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 when the market is, is, is negative or in a void, you're starting to see a lot of these stocks start to break down. A lot of times you can come in here and you can look at this 50-day relative strength, and once you see that uh, some of those stocks fall below the S&P 500, so the S&P 500 is down 5%, you got a couple stocks in here that are down seven or eight percent or nine percent. So they come in, I say, at 0.91 or 0.90. I'm probably going to uh, probably sell those things and and wait for them to start to uh, you know at least catch up with the S&P 500. If you had done that last year, I'm sure there's a lot of tech stocks that once they were starting to underperform, even though the, the market was going down, when they were the market's down 10 percent and your stocks were going down 20, 25 percent, that that little uh, tidbit there would have gotten you out of those. And, then you would come back into them once once the thing firmed up. Now, so, so, so once you get this custom stock list that you like, one of the new features that we have, and if you go over here where it says custom stock list and click on that little thumbs up, so that's going to make this your primary uh, stock watch list. And so with, with that, um, when you pull this up from, from here on out, you're going to notice that uh, – you're going to see some yellow triangles that we don't have any on this list right now. But let's just say uh, something happened to Intel. Okay, it, this, this requires attention. This will give you some of the things where the stock was upgraded, downgraded, um, you know, whether it was making a new high, whether it was making a new low, if it, if it, it would go down here, if it breached the sell stop. Some kind of activity was going on in that stock. And some days you may, you may not get anything. Maybe it was a point in figures. Uh, breakout, something like that. Some days you're not you're, you're not going to have anything, but other days that fast. If you have if you own 20, 30 stocks, and then you have like and you have something that you're looking to buy, <coughs> and you pull off that that primary list, you see what requires attention, and you may have something that you've been out all day, you've been golfing all day, or you're uh, been, been to work doing something else. And all of a sudden you see, wow, this thing's been downgraded technically, and something else happened to it. I missed all that. And you can you can get yourself tomorrow morning read up about it, and if you want to take some action, you're going to be able to do that.
Now, another thing that you can do with, with your list, go back to the regular list there. Well, so you get all the stocks pulled up. Okay. Now, above that, we have something called filters. And uh, now, let's just say this is just a, a list of stocks that you would want to, that you're thinking about buying. You like, you know, you, you've got these, you, you've got them off of, uh, say, uh, the Bank of America, you know, number one rated stocks or something like that. And you like, and when you combine that list with the market edge, so you had the, the best of the fun, best of the fundamentals, and then you combine that with the best of the technicals, you have the best of both worlds. It's going to just help you make money, uh, you know, just give you, improve your your chances of making money with the stock. Now, in this case, let's say this list his custom stock list was a uh, uh, you like this the the early entry buy. So go ahead and click on the filters up there under the stock watch. Yeah, right there. Click on filters. No, okay. Now let's just now go ahead and click on early entry buys down here at the situations. Early entry longs. There you go. Okay. In this case we didn't have any, but if if you like the early entry buys and you come in here and say we had two or three stocks in there, it would, it would that would enable you to take your list of 20, 30 stocks that, that Merrill Lynch loves, and all of a sudden you've just taken that 20, 30 stocks and uh, and said, okay, well these we know these are fundamental a good buy. And also, Market Edge likes this on a technical basis, and it's coming out of a basing pattern. This, this, I just took that list of 20 stocks, and in five seconds, I narrowed it down to one or two that I'm probably going to buy the next day. If you like some momentum plays, let's say, uh, get your best longs on that situation. Under situations, click on best longs there, Will. Okay. Okay. We again. We didn't get in here. Click it on. Click over on on a list. Take your list over here to the uh, Nasdaq 100, over here to the far right under indexes, and uh, uh, up to the right further. Okay. Okay. Now go ahead. Let's let's click on early entry longs now. Okay. We have one. Microsoft was an early entry long. A little bit surprising. But this is telling you that they're seeing some accumulation in Microsoft after it's pulled back in here. And this may be one that if you're thinking about uh, buying Microsoft, you probably wait for the earnings to come out tonight, and then we, you would probably buy it. Go ahead and hit, hit the best longs this time. Now, this, this would be momentum plays. Uh, click on the power rating down there below. Okay. Now you have the, these momentum stocks. The best longs are stocks that are really have a lot of oomph behind them. And in this case, you have uh, you know you have about seven or eight stocks that are a good momentum plays. If this is the best buy list off Merrill Lynch, these would be strong fundamentally, and they're really um, you know out outperform the Dow. They're they're on a kind of a, a bit of a tear. You can see also on the 50-day relative strength that they're outperforming the S&P 500 in here by 20, 30, 40 percent. And they're all under uh, accumulation on that UD slope. So the, this would give you a list that fast. If you're looking for some momentum plays, uh, and momentum plays are when you're seeing the market starting to break through some moving averages. You're starting to see, uh, you know, you're, you're making new highs. Uh, let's say we take out the December high on the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, or or maybe the August high again on the, on the Dow. And that 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 momentum usually will carry through. And that would give you a list of stocks if you're looking for more short-term trades. Um, and break it down, break down a list of say 100 stocks down to a, a list of four or five. And then you can uh, you know, do your little research on that and, and figure out where you want to go in and out of these things. So, um, you know, if you, if you work with it and get yourself familiar with this, you know, you can find uh, you know some these, some of these things. You can make a list of ETFs. You know, we have ETF sectors and uh, domestic indexes in there. You might want to find what okay, what ETF sectors are are improving. Uh, what uh, you know? What stocks are improving? They're not quite up to that long. Uh, what if, if you see the market in the trading trading range? Like you know, we've we've talked about the Nasdaq has been a trading range since since September between about 11.4 on the upside and around 10.2 on the downside. Well, maybe you get in there and uh, if, if you if you see the Nasdaq, it's it looks stretched, it's overbought. You can go to the, go to a list of the stocks that you have and look for uh, stocks that are near resistant. It should be over here on the opinions and conditions on the Third one, go over to the third button over there under opinion conditions. Okay, here's some that are un, un, they're, uh, near resistance. These may be stocks that are a little, if they're overbought to you, look at the stochastics on, on smart chart, 
you see that they're uh, overbought or maybe the uh 14 day RSI or 9 day RSI is up uh you know in the you know 80 or something like that and th these would probably be candidates where okay the the, the index is going to run into resistance I'm looking for some opportunities here some stocks that are overbought they're up against they're hitting resistance you know I may I may want to short these or you know uh you know sell some covered calls something like that offer myself up some protection so you can work around things if you if you think of them that way um how how you can use some of these things as the, you know, the way the market posture is going you know if you're getting if you're starting to see the market break out you may want to get stocks again that are uh you know, like you say, the, the best longs, that type of thing. And they'll, they'll take these lists of 40, 50 stocks, and, you know, you can break down a list of 100 or 40 and find yourself three, four, or five ideas that you could probably make money. And the reason I say that you uh, the best lists end up being like the Goldman Sachs, uh, you know, number one or number two rated stocks, because they they, you know, they, they got the best in the business. They're, they've already screened these stocks, and they go. They, they look. At, they're looking ahead. They know that these are going to outperform. You have a, you have the best shot of making money on on these things right there. However, the reason why why you want to add the technicals to them is let's just say uh, Goldman Sachs upgrades the stock. Let's uh, and and they say things look great. The stock's moving up. It's the uh, the fundamentals look great. The earnings are looking good. I expect this stock to go from five dollars in earnings to seven dollars. But well, perhaps by the time they get to uh, upgrading that stock, it may have already gone up 10, 12 percent, and it's it's due for a pullback because you know what the, what the analyst is looking at this. He's not looking out over a you know two week, three week period. He's looking out for the next six months or a year. But by the time he gets around to uh, upgrading that and the report goes out, stock's already moved up. You buy the stock, it goes down 10, 12 percent. Well, your, your idea of Goldman, Goldman Sachs isn't very isn't very good at that point. You you may think if that happens two or three times in a row, you could think that there's there's uh, in uh, the research stinks. That's not the case. The case is that you just happen to have bought the, uh, the the stock after it's already moved going into that report, and your timing was off, which market edge will help you, uh, you know, filter through that and, and hopefully keep you out of the ones that are overbought. And you know, maybe you got something that's had a pullback and Goldman loves it, then that would give you an opportunity to to get a great entry point. So, uh, work your way around that stock watch feature. I think it's, it's got a lot of great things on there. The, the professional, um, you know, brokers and, and institutional players use something like stock watch when they go through that. They also do that when they look at the, the different sectors to make sure they're in the, the right areas of the of the market. They also do that with the industry group. They they'll take the 50-day relative strength and one uh, to five day, ten days. See what's moving uh, currently. They don't. They don't want to necessarily go into. Uh, and they're not going to buy stocks in industry groups that are going down uh, or weakening. You know, they're looking to buy uh, industry groups and sectors that are improving and that are strong because you know, they're not going to fight the market. And uh, just to wrap it up again, don't be uh, jumping in here to buy everything. We've got a neutral market position right now. It, if we start to pull back here, we could go to a void. Uh, it's all going to depend on the gui forward guidance in here. And also, we need a couple weeks worth of data, economic data, that shows that um, <coughs> you know, if the bad news is going to be bad news, we don't want it to be too bad. And the last couple of reports we got, you know, we got like that retail sales and things like that, uh, really rocked the market. And if we get more reports like that, then you're going to start having more and more analysts come in and saying, that uh, you know, soft landing is not going to happen. We're, we're we're going into maybe a you know a hard landing, and of course that would uh, bring back the the play that you know we we may not have seen the the bottom here. But as of right now, let's kind of go along with the fact that I think that um, you know perhaps October was the bottom. We'll see how earnings go, and we and you know we'll give, give a couple more data points on the uh, this e economic data, so we can see what uh, what we're going to do and whether uh, you know we can navigate a soft landing or not. That's all I got for you, Will. All right. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Remember, if you have a question you'd like to answer in the next Tuesday Tech Talk, email it into support at marketedge.com or ask one of our live chat representatives to pass your question along to us for the next Tuesday Tech Talk. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.